winners and new movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world by way of knockout, the Shire And Brianne Chandler, who put up a valiant effort but didn't get it done there in the title match, she is now going to be paired with the Godfather, the former team champion, and they will be going up against Whitney Seibold and Huick. And you know what we have here? This marvelous matchup of Miss Movies and the Godfather. Do you hear that sound, Shire Wolves? That's the end of your reign. Four wins, and this marvelous matchup is coming for you. And your winners! Yes, that's it! Imagine the Professor Juan Harris sits at home and enjoys a quiet evening with Frazier and his many cats. His teammate, however, JTE, a guy no stranger to not only the white hot spotlight of the Schmodown, but the playoff format in general that we've done here for a number of years. And Joe! What up? The next. Oh. So basically he was trying to like make these teams to make him available to get to the belt. I think he might have created maybe another championship run here. I really feel like we have a chance to go to the top. JTE, a little evil, is uh, done for the year due to an accident. He's been replaced by Lon's brother, Jonathan, and their team name are the Harris Brothers. And Christian, we're a pretty good couple, but the odd couple is going to be taking on the winner of this quarterfinal match between the Harris brothers. What did I just say? The Harris brothers versus Take the Cannoli. I know Take the Cannoli, Drew McWeeny, uh, Brianne Chandler, Miss Movies herself, the Harris brothers. What's the story behind that? Because at last I heard, it was JTE and Lon Harris as the evil geniuses. Well, I'll tell you what, it got the whole thing got thrown in. I, if you looked at the previous special, they were my pick to win. I thought that the evil geniuses of JTE and Lon Harris were going to take this whole thing. Well, that got thrown out the window when JTE got himself on one of those stupid bird scooters. I hate those dumb You're not things. a fan of them? I find them to provide a nice public service. Well, they also provided a hospital bill for JTE because he, he got injured from it. He's not able to compete Get inside well this soon, tournament. Get well soon, contribute to the GoFundMe. Lon Harris reaches out and gets his brother, another professor, to go ahead and compete, hence the Harris brothers. Now, I don't know anything about John. I don't know. His, name, his name's John? John Lon and, Lon. and John? Yeah. you got to love that family sense of humor. Well, I don't know anything about John at all. Um, if he's good, we're going to find out today. But they're going up against Take the Cannoli with Brianne Chandler and Drew McQueenie who had arguably the best performance of round number one, scoring 35 points, tying the record previously, hold by above, uh, previously held by above the line and top 10. And they are now tied within their first match together. This is a scary team. But if John Harris is a great player, Take the cannoli could be in trouble. Hard to put it all on his shoulders, but you speak the truth, my man. We've seen last-minute competitors thrown into a schmodown, and it doesn't fare that well most of the time, especially if you're looking at a playoff format. You look at the Star Wars match we had when Alex Damon comes in. It's un unfortunate. I mean, I know Alex was thinking he was going up against Sam Whitworth here. Take the cannoli is going to be the same mindset where they want to show no mercy. Is Lonathan and Jonathan going to be any match for Brienne and Drew? We're about to find out. Out. We will, and we're going to hear from what the competitors said. Here we go. Oh, I'm feeling so good about this marvelous matchup. We're already in round two. No, round one, they tied. These two tied the top 
score of 35 points. Can you look at this? Ah, good afternoon, students. So, as many of you may have already heard by now, my esteemed partner in crime, Mr. Josh Tapia, a man who was doing all of his assigned reading, was working diligently to become more of an academic presence here in the Shmodan. Unfortunately, he did not take all of my advice uh, not to ride around on improvised, experimental, motorized transit. Uh, unfortunately, struck down in his prime, Mr. Tapia will no longer be able to join us here. We don't have any JTE, unfortunately. How do you feel about this, champion? I'm a, I'm a little bummed. I, I wanted some JTE, but we wish him well, and uh, we know Snyder's still out there lurking around, so that'll, that'll be just as good. And you may be wondering who my new consort is here for the tournament, my new partner. Uh, we're lucky enough to be joined by a visiting professor, a poet, a philosopher, a great man, my own brother, Visiting Professor Jonathan Harris. Thank you. I've been uh, taking a sabbatical of several months, and mm -hmm. I thought I would come by and help you in your little trivia game. Uh, mm -hmm. The hard part about today is that, yes, Lon Harris is a formidable contender. He he knows what he, you know, he brings a, a lot of knowledge to the table. He's a good fighter. He knows the game. His brother's a wild card. Like, this is a crazy thing to walk in, and you don't know who that other person is or what they're going to be like. That's a little harder to compete with. Drew, Brianne, I respect you both greatly as uh, competitors, but I do think your knowledge of the cinematic arts will fail, and you will fall at the end of this, much like uh, Thelma and Louise at the end of their mm. great journey. Mm. You're a greater man than I am, Gunga Din. And I just want to finish by saying that I predict the Harris brothers are going to take not only this entire tournament, but soon find ourselves at the very summit, the peak of the Schmodown, because this is, when it comes down to it, an academic challenge, a, a, a an academic decathlon of cinema, if you will. And who else to sit atop the championship but two academics? The finals will be in Oxford, I'm told? Mm, mm, Cambridge uh, and then Oxford. What do you think about it, Brianne? What do you think about it? What do you think oh about it? Oh my goodness. I think, well, I think it's an advantage and a disadvantage since we have played together, but then also the disadvantage of not knowing what's going to be coming for us. So, excited, nervous, puked earlier, so I'm good. Look, Marquia McCarty has more energy than anybody in this entire She's studio. She's ready to she, go. She is super excited, and as she should be. This is a team that scored 35 points. She sees a winner in them. She sees the next champions, and they are pretty confident. Both Drew and Brienne together, they, they look like they have a really good chemistry. Then you go to the Harris brothers, who seem to be obviously cut from the same cloth. They know each other. They actually are cut from the they same cloth. They are cut from the same fact. cloth. And because they they have the same type of arrogance, not, not arrogance, but the same type of confidence. Um, now, that's why I said earlier, we know Lon Harris is one of the elite players. You go back to that match that he had against Ethan Irwin, and the guy is a top-tier player. That's why I'm saying that if his brother is as good, this is going to be a very, very good team and somebody to look out for. But like you said, it's just a matter of for your first match to get thrown into a quarterfinal match in your debut. Brian Bishop had a tough time getting thrown into a title match. You mentioned Bruce Green mm -hmm. getting t thrown into a title match. So will it affect John? We're going to find out today. And what I liked is that watching those pre-match interviews, it did not affect his stage presence. No. And I mean, he is ready to go. The Harris brothers taking on Take the Cannoli, which of course is a famous quote from the hit Jay Moore spoof, Mafia. Yeah. Christian, tell us what the tale of the tape is. Well, the tale of the tape, the Harris brothers will carry over that one victory from the evil geniuses. They will get that victory, and they are are one and coming into this thing their strengths are uh, still action movies no it's all it just says novels novels and syllabus that's all it says i don't know that we have those wedges on the wheel gonna be interesting yeah, to see so, and then you get take the cannoli 80s movies musicals and entrances for days entrances <laughs> for days italian cuisine for sure i feel pretty uh pretty ready pretty enthused all right if that's the case ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmodown Introducing first, with a record of one win, no defeats, and one knockout. Give it up for Lon and John the Harris Brothers. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, they're screaming out of rhythm, but John right, smiling. Well, not happy, John. Seems that Juan Harris, a pipe in mouth, ready to go. This uh, team looks formidable. And their opponents led to the ring by their manager, Marquia McCarty, with a record of one win, no defeats. The 2018 free for all winner, Brianne Chandler, and the former movie trivia Schmodown team champion, the godfather, Drew McWeeny, take the cannoli! Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, I'm loving it. I like that. Oh, I like that. Yo, here we go. I like that. Straight out of Look at it. I love this. Brian Chandler is getting Drew McWeeny to play, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. Look at Drew, all dressed up. This is amazing. Yeah, ready to go. Yeah. We don't know if that's his blood, that's well, somebody else's blood. If Brian might have scratched him by accident. Yeah, Sam Levine was lucky enough to get a smile out of him. She got a full costume. Yeah, love wow. It. Very, uh, love very incredible entrances. All right, so our competitors have hit the table. Mark, tell them how round number one works. In round number one, it is the team format. Eight questions from eight different corners of the movie. Trivia Galaxy will be asked to the field. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we ask the question, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Keep in mind, although this is the team format, you are not allowed to rely on your teammates' knowledge in round number one. This is an individual exercise although each point you accrue will be added to your team's total. Each team has three usages of the JTE get well soon rule. If you're not sure you heard a question, you need to hear it again, or you just need to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. Each team also has one challenge to use throughout the duration of the match. All right, so with that, the Harris brothers, are you ready? Very ready. May I have a quill? <laughs> no, you may not. <laughs> I like this. I kid. like him though. I like it better than Lon. <laughs> uh, no. and How dare you? Take the cannoli. Are you ready? Uh, we are. Stick around because after this, we're doing a fish called Wanda remake. <laughs> then let's get ready to schmodown. All right. All right. Crowds into it. Christian, why don't you kick off? Here we go. All right. Here we go. The first category is from the realm of comic book movies. In Avengers: Age of Ultron. Who gives Scarlet Witch a motivational speech that convinces her to fight in the Battle of Sokovia? I don't think you disagree with this. Between the two of us, who's given more motivational speeches to each other? I'd say I've given you plenty of motivational speeches. Uh, 100 percent. Five. Four. I've never time, given you one. Every Three. day you want to quit and go to Hawaii. Two. That's what I was going to tell you after this match. One. Come Pens on, down. Lon. I believe it is Hawkeye. That is correct. Drew. I believe it is also Hawkeye. John. I have written Hawkeye. You have. And I Brienne? put Vision. Okay, so the Harris brothers going up by one point there, 2 1. As the Harris brothers get it correct, Drew gets it correct. That's right. Great next uh, question. Hawkeye Clinton Barton, useless as he may be in the Avengers movies, comes to play <laughs> good, good for speeches. the Harris brothers. How dare you, sir? Your next category is the world of comedies, yuck yucks, funnies. Your question is What actor plays Steve Stifler in the American Pie series? Hard one. Reminds me of my friend Naveed Makalaj. <laughs> Everybody knows. Five, unfortunately. Four, a stiff. Three, two, one, Drew. Uh, Sean Williams Scott? That is correct. John? Uh, I have written his uh, birth name, Michael Williams Scott. Oh, that's <laughs> incorrect. Sean Williams Scott. Yes, and Lon. I also had Sean Williams Scott. All right, tie uh, game here. Tie game, 3-3. Three, three. All right, a three back to you, Chris. As John misses that one. All right, here we go. Next question, dramas. Dramas. Who was Paul Newman's co-lead playing Minnesota Fats in The Hustler? I do like that nickname. Minnesota Fats yeah. is a great yeah. nickname. <laughs> you come. Where are you from? But you claim Florida, New York. What yeah. do we say? Hey, here comes Five. New York Chubby. Four. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I had three pieces of pizza. Three, two. I'll repeat the question. Yep. Uh, who was Paul Newman's co-lead playing Minnesota Fats in The Hustler? I'll come walking in. They're like, here comes the Virginia Tub. <laughs> Five. Four, three, two, one. Jonathan. Drats, I was thinking of a fat Minnesotan I know named Clive Earl. That is incorrect. <laughs> is it Brennan Gleason? That is incorrect. Oh. Jackie Gleason? Jack Jackie Gleason. Gleason is correct. Uh, that would be Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Jackie Gleason. So I Lon, got the Gleason. So I believe the wrong, Lon, wrong Gleason. Yeah. yeah, Lon and Drew have not missed yet. Okay. I, I prefer uh, the Minneapolis load, Mark. Perfect rounds. <laughs> 
And as we get to the halfway point in round number one, your next category comes from the world of animated movies, drawn by hand or on a computer. The question is, Bruce Campbell voices the character of Mayor Shelbourne, the gluttonous and egotistical mayor of Swallow Falls, in what animated film? I'm going to say a quote. You name the movie. Now we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. Back to the Future. <laughs> it's from Back to the Future. Yes, five. <laughs> no points are awarded. Four. No, unfamiliar. Three, two, one. Pens down. Brianne. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Correct. Lon. Uh, I put Rango. <laughs> Correct. Drew. Right. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. And John. I thought it was the classic Megamon. Oh. All right. That so is a classic. Six four. Cannoli going back on top here. Six four. Queenie and Chandler both yep. have children. I wonder if that factored into their knowledge of that question. Drew is the only one. I've perfect. only seen it 17 times. Well. Next question. <laughs> Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Freddie Highmore played which role in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Why do you get mad at me when I ask you that question? You answered Back to the Future like you were perturbed. That would even challenge your knowledge. Oh. I mean, I'm not broke. I've seen the movie more than once. <laughs> Five, four, <laughs> you three. You never missed a shot. No. Two, one. Hands four down, minutes. please. Lon. I believe he was the main role of Charlie Bucket. Correct. True. I have his last name wrong. I got Charlie Button. Oh, that is incorrect. Oh, I, I didn't know we were looking for last names. I, oh, well. Sorry. Should I just put Charlie? Guess I got it wrong. First of all, first of all, here, here's if it no. would have just been Charlie, I, we would accept it. I should have just written the. the right. first. I just wrote Charlie. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I wrote Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. All right. All right. So Cannoli seven six. Seven six. It's a different, per it's a different person. The Harris brothers yeah. right. coming to play. Next the next question more. comes yeah. to the world of movie release dates. Oh God. These are dates movies were released in, and your question is: Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Splash. Romancing the Stone and The Last Starfighter were all released in what year? I would have gotten that one. Good year at the movie. What, this one? Yeah. yeah I, I can list ten more movies. Yeah. Want to oh, make it even easier? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Drew. That would be 1984. Yes. John. The Orwellian Nightmare, 1984. Yes. Brianne. 1984. Come on. I also got 1984. Got I hear it. it's a good right. album. Yeah. It's well full of rock and roll music. I like it. Okay, here we go, guys. Two more questions left in this round. Nine, eight. How many more? Horror slash thriller. Horror slash thriller. Which 1996 horror film was directed by Peter Jackson? I believe I saw this one. Mm, this is wrong. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. John? The Frighteners. That is correct. Mm. Brienne? I'm just embarrassed by my answer, so I'm not showing <laughs> it. That's <laughs> fair. Uh, uh, it was The Frighteners. That is correct. The Frighteners. You got it. Okay. Did Brienne write a Lord of the Rings film? We'll never know. <laughs> All right. 10-10. Tie game here. Last question. Last question is a Patreon question. It is sponsored. <laughs> by our patron, John Patterson. John Patterson, thank you for joining the Movie Trivia Showdown Patreon. You're not a member of the Patreon yet? Become a patron today, select which tier is right for you. Maybe one day we'll say your name like we just did. John Patterson, now Christian John Patterson, big scores and soundtracks guy. Uh -huh. That's the category he wants to choose from today. Your final question in round one, courtesy of Mr. Patterson. Who composed the score for 2017's The Shape of Water? You're a big uh, score guy. Yeah. You had that one? This one I was in the chamber? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Five. Four. Three. I would have missed it. Two. Yeah, you would. Playing at home. One. <laughs> Brienne. I'm just guessing Hans Zimmer. Incorrect. Lon? And I'm not 100% positive how to pronounce the gentleman's name. Alexander Despla? Correct. Yeah, I, I did not. Didn't have it? Nope. All right, and Jonathan? It's what happens when you play the grape escape. Alexandre Despla. Wow, a two-point <laughs> lead by the Harris brothers. John had a little bit of a rough start, but comes back strong in that second half. Harris Brothers up by two here. That's crazy. Is that crazy. score even right? I mean, it, it, you looked up, and it can only yeah. was up by two. You thought they were going to run away, away with this thing. And then we had a Charlie Button, Charlie Bucket issue. And now, all of a sudden, the Harris Brothers have taken the ball and run with it to the tune of a two-point oh, yes. lead going into round two. Two-point lead round two. Like you said, Mark, this is a battle already. It's going back and forth just in the first round. How does round number two work? Yeah. Round number two is known as the the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and for one team, justice. And today's wheel is sponsored by a member of the movie trivia Schmodown Patreon, and that sponsor he is Josh. 
Gofton sponsoring the whole darn wheel today. Thank you, Josh Gofton. Uh, his wheel slices for today's match are Stanley Kubrick movies and thriller movies. He likes tingling the spine that Josh Gofton does. Thank you, Josh. And one wheel slice, in addition to that, is a sponsored slice, and that would be the Samuel L. Jackson slice. So if somebody hits Samuel L. Jackson, we'll say your name. Now, how do we get up to that wheel? Simple, I'll tell you. Each team gets one spin at it. If you're not sure of the category that you spun, you're not entirely confident in your ability to answer six questions from that category, you can spin again, unless, of course, it is opponent's choice. We also have spinner's choice up there on the wheel. Each category does feature six questions. Like I said, each question's worth two points. Uh, you are allowed to consult with your teammate in this round. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options one of which is the correct answer. And at that point, the value of the question goes down to one point. Remember both teams, stealing is in play here. You can steal from your opponents if they miss the question. And Christian, I believe I'm done talking, so you can wake back up. Well, the Harris brothers have all three of their JTE rules left, and Taking Holy has two left. As we get in here, the Harris brothers, you're in the lead. Would you like to spin first or second? Uh, I believe we'll spin first. You're gonna spin first? Okay, go ahead and spin. Please spin from the wheel, not the peg. Please spin from Please the wheel. Please grab the wheel, not the peg. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. There you go. I find if we spin. both say it, it works. Really reiterates it. Maybe he doesn't have to. He's the older brother. Yeah. I do not play childish Let's games like wheel spinning. A robbery there, and Jess passing opponent's choice. Oh. This could be Samuel Jackson. It is. I think we can take it. We'll take They're going to take They're Samuel, take Samuel Jackson. L. Jackson. It is the Patreon slice, like I said. So thank you to Dan Streetbeck. Dan Streetbeck sponsoring that Samuel L. Jackson slice. Thank you, Dan and Josh Gotham for the entire wheel. All right, guys. So you're going to have six questions in the realm of Samuel L. Jackson movies. Here we go. Starting that out. All right. First one. Samuel L. Jackson played American entrepreneur George Washington Williams in this 2016 adventure film. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, our that's that. We'll, we'll guess. Time. Time. Yeah, oh, sorry. Time's up. Yeah, you got it for the steal. We should have said no. We don't know. You don't know. <laughs> nope. Nobody even wants to guess. No. Le the legend, no, of, legend of Tarzan. Oh. Well, the legend of Tarzan. There you go. Ah. So, <laughs> so, well, so, just, the, so just a reminder, yeah. either you can you repeat it. Before time runs out. If I understand. time runs out, you, got, it's, it, you yes, can't you take it. You do not lose yeah. points. Yeah. You can ask for, for multiple choice. Yeah. Yes. yes. Here we go. Next one. We do or do not lose points. We don't. Okay. Okay. Never All right. Here we go. Samuel L. Jackson starred with Hayden Christensen and Rachel Bilson in this Doug Lyman film. Five. Yeah, let's do, we'll do multiple choice. Is it A, the spirit, B, equilibrium, C, jumper, D, paycheck? Jumper. One point. Yep. All right, they extend their lead to three, four questions left. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Samuel L. Jackson won a BAFTA for Best Supporting Actor and was nominated for an Academy Award for which film? Five, four, uh, three. Multiple choice. A, Coach Carter. B, Pulp Fiction. C, Django Unchained. D, The Negotiator. Pulp Fiction. For one point. Okay. All right, using a lot of multiple choice here yeah. on a wedge that they did select. They could have spun again. Here's number four. In which film does Samuel L. Jackson get eaten by a shark? Uh, <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. Two points. Mm, we were looking for Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Oh, is that not? I <laughs> had a different oh, answer. Yeah, different. Pardon me. Question, question five. Question five. Here we go. In Kingsman, the Secret Service, Sam Jackson's Valentine feeds Harry a meal from which fast food chain? I think we should go for multiple choices. I have not seen the film. <laughs> uh, we'll go multiple choice. A, KFC. B, McDonald's. C, Taco Bell. D, Burger King. Uh, I think it, uh, I'm going to guess Taco Bell. It's incorrect. McDonald's. That's correct for one point. Okay, and Canoli with a steal. Five-point game here. Harris Brothers right, still in the lead. Yeah. One question left yeah. for them. All right, here you go. This is the uh, this is the last question. It's actually been in a number of fine films. 
<laughs> there is one where he crosses a lane with Ben Affleck, I believe. <laughs> Academy Award winner, Ben Affleck. All right, here we go. I'm telling you, John's better than Lon. <laughs> okay. Who plays Samuel L. Jackson's co-lead in the film Black Snake Moan? Christina Ricci. Two points. That's All a right. big two points. Two points. Seven point game as Take the Cannoli steps so up to the wheel. How do you feel about it? Okay. You were reading them. I was counting. All right, yeah, Drew, man. once again, yeah. please spin from the wheel and not the peg, please, sir, as okay. we spin here. Drew has that magic touch yeah, from right. his days and above the line to last last time they played. But he's been bloodied and battered to look at him. He is a shell of a man. He needs medical attention, yet he, he might, continues to play He through might it. be the best uh, person to ever spin the wheel. Oh, no. Uh, no opponent's uh, choice. This could be spinner's choice, Christian. Uh, Are you a prophet? Action, uh, action adventure. Action adventure. Do they take it in honor of the fallen evil Spin genius, it? Little Evil? They one will more not. Time. No. They will not. No honor. I'm going to spend it one more time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this goes. All right. Another good spin by Drew. Well, I'm telling you, see if it pays off. If, if you, I'd like to, to see Frankie it. Numbers' stats on how many times Drew oh, has hit something favorable. That's true. I'd like to watch Frankie Numbers do the research oh, no. on that. Uh, but this could be opponent's choice. Wait. It's going that way. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah. I told you. I told you. He has the magic touch. You did say 80s movie. He's got the magic touch. It's. It's crazy. It's the answer to every question crazy. should be Vim Vendors or Vim Vendors canceled. Here in the studio audience today yeah. are shouting that it's fixed. It's not fixed. He's just that damn good with his index finger and his thumb, kids. Oh, okay. All right, take the cannoli. You have spun 80s movies based on the amazing spinning acumen of Drew McQueenie. Drew and Brianne, six questions in this slate, and we kick it off with who plays Jester in the classic Top Gun? Five, four, three, two. Rick Rosovich? That is incorrect for the steal. It's Tim Robbins. That oh. is incorrect oh. for Michael Ironside. Ah. Jester is dead, and so is that question. Nobody gets yeah. the points. Uh, Lon, Lon bummed. He knew how big that steal was. That could have yeah, been big, but they still have a seven-point advantage. Yeah. Five questions to go in the world of 1980s. Your next question is, who plays Duke, the dog-faced boy in Big Top Pee-wee. Five. Multiple choice. Is it A, Doug Jones, B, Kevin Peter Hall, C, Benicio Del Toro, or D, Weird Al Yankovic? It's C, it's Benicio Del Toro. It certainly yeah, is for point. a point. Yeah. Yeah. He's that weird guy on Canto Bite. Our next <laughs> question is who directed the 1982 animated film The Secret of Nim? Don Bluth. Two points. It is Don Bluth for two more points. And the crowd seeming to woo, and then it all went away. <laughs> all right, your next question. Your fourth in this round. In which Jean-Claude Van Damme movie does he play the real-life fighter Frank Dux? Five, four, three, uh, Multiple two. choice. Is it a kickboxer? B, Bloodsport, C, Black Eagle, or D, No Retreat, No Surrender? I'm going to go with A. You're going to be wrong for the steal. Yeah, is, is, is it A, Kickboxer, B, Bloodsport, C, Black Eagle, or D, No Retreat, No Surrender? It's B, Bloodsport. It is, One in fact, point. B, Bloodsport. Kumite. Kumite. <laughs> it's a big steal because now that guarantees the Harris brothers yeah. going into round three will have the lead of some sort. But the next question for Take the Cannoli, the penultimate question in this round. In the 1987 film Inner Space, whose body did Dennis Quaid's pod get injected into? Martin Short. It was Martin Short for two points. Yep. It's a three-point game. They can pull it in one, and they don't need multiple choice. Last question here. All right. Your last question. In the 1984 classic Ghostbusters, after Rick Moranis' character, Lewis Tully, is possessed, what is he seeking? Do you mean, well, who is he seeking? Who is he seeking? Yeah. 
Okay, uh, the gatekeeper. He is seeking the two gatekeeper. Points. Yes. Two points, and I like I said, they could have pulled within one. Yeah. They yeah. did. They did not need multiple choice. They've clearly seen Ghostbusters a number of times, and it's merely a one-point advantage for the Harris brothers getting into round number three. Wow, what a game so far. One point as the Harris brothers go into the third round with a one-point lead over Take the Cannoli and Mark. Round number three is the do or the die round. How does it work? Unless we get to sudden death, my right partner, nobody wants that today. We are very exhausted here. In round number three, each team is going to give us a series of numbers. They can range from one to 20. Uh, Harris Brothers here in the lead, you'll be giving us your numbers first. Each one of those numbers correspond to a different category of movie trivia. The first question we ask is worth two points. We'll tell you the category, and then it's up to the team to decide which member is going to answer that one individually. You may not consult with your teammate for the two-point or the three-point question. That question is going to be answered by the opposite teammate. You may only consult with your teammate for the five-point question, and we go to the Harris Brothers for your numbers. Three numbers. Yes, sir. Three numbers. I will go with four, seven, and 11. Four, seven, and 11 for the Harris Brothers. Take seven the cannoli. And 11, the crowd indifferent. Take the cannoli. <laughs> All right, one, five, two. One, five, and two. Interesting take the cannoli. way to count. And take the cannoli will be going first. They will be going first. Okay. They go with category number one. Category number one, here we go. Modern classics. Who's going to take modern classics? I'll take it. All right, modern classics. Here you go. All right. In No Country for Old Men, who plays Lewin Moss, the man who stumbles across a briefcase full of money from a drug deal gone bad? Five. Josh Brolin. Two points. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she hits it. 2019, she hits it. And now we bounce over to the Harris brothers who chose number four. They chose number four, numero quattro, or as Bono would say for some reason, catorce. Yeah. And that number corresponds to the world of Tom Cruise. The wild, wonderful, great smiled world of Tom Cruise. <laughs> and your question for two points. In which film does Cruise? Play a character named Ethan Hunt. Uh, that would be in all of the Mission Impossible films. Yes, that any of those are correct. And he gets the two points. Two points. And now it's Perfect. 21 to 20, so it goes back to take the cannoli. But who found the briefcase with the money in it in the third one? Yeah. All, right, here we, <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go for the back to take the cannoli for their three-pointer. Right. Drew, you have Denzel Washington movies. Okay. All right, here we go. Who played Denzel's wife in Training Day? No, I don't have it. No, no oh. five, you want to guess? Four, I three, don't have it. two, one. Looking for Eva Mendes. No, Eva, Eva Mendes. I would not have Mendes. I wouldn't have guessed. All right, so awesome. now we, st we stay with Take the Cannoli, yeah. who needs to hit their five. If they hit their five, it bounces back to the Harris brothers. However, if they miss, the Harris brothers will go on to face the odd couple in the next round. Here we go, guys. So category number two. Category number two is coming of age films. Coming of okay. age. Coming of age. You have okay. two JTE rules okay. left. Good. Coming of age. Take the cannoli. Here we go. For five points. Why was Andrew, played by Emilio Estevez, in detention? in The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Taping your guys' butt cheeks together. For five points, there you yeah. go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All yeah right. it was. All right. Deservedly so, I might add. Now we have the three-pointer for the Harris Brothers, who chose number seven. That's right, that's gonna correspond to Action Adventure, and that is gonna be answered by the lesser of the Harris Brothers, Lon. <laughs> Uh, now I accept it. I wasn't ready at the beginning yeah. of the batch, but now I accept it. I pulled Ethan Hunt out of that. True, yeah. <laughs> All right, Lon, your question for three points. In the Poseidon Adventure, the ship is struck by a tidal wave during what holiday celebration? Uh, I want to say it's a New Year's celebration. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. Then we'll give you three points, gosh all darn right. it. Doesn't so, really matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter at all. It, it does in case they, look, right. the 25, 24. So here we are. If the Harris brothers 
get this five-pointer, they advance. If they don't, take the cannoli, will advance. Whoever wins will play the odd couple in the semifinals. Here is your final question. Brother versus cannoli, what a matchup. You selected number 11. And the Mark Rippon number corresponds up here to the category of Pixar movies. Wow. Maybe the Harris Brothers were raised on Pixar, more likely the works of Robert Frost. The question <laughs> is, who voiced Slinky the dog in 1995's Toy Story? Jim Varney. And your winners! Advancing to the next round, Juan and John, the Harris Brothers! What a win. The Harris Brothers upset, take the cannoli. Yeah, John Harris is playing the against Snyder and it's a great go. Wow. Just an unbelievable wow. performance wow. by both the Harris Brothers. Lon and John really so complimenting so each other well. It seemed like they both knew that last question of the world of Pixar. Maybe they were raised on simplistic cartoons. And for Take the Cannoli, a hell of a performance. I mean, 25 points are on the board. It's just that the Harris Brothers were too much for them. That was a back and forth battle. First round, second round. I mean, here we go, up and down. What a great match that was. All four competitors scrapping it out. Mm -hmm. And the Harris Brothers advancing and now will face and Draco and Snyder, I don't think a lot of us saw that coming because McWeeny and Chandler played so good in that first round. And man, so uh, yeah, that was that was baffling. Lon and John came to play. Now we're going to talk to Jen Sturger, who's with both the Harris brothers and Take the Cannoli. Here we go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Take the Cannoli. Guys, I don't know if you're stunned, but personally, I'm stunned. This room is stunned. After your 35 points in your last match, I think we were all expecting you guys to just come out, but you guys had tough questions today. How are you feeling after this, Marquia? I'm proud of them. I am so proud of these two of my clients, of this marvelous matchup, because, oh my God, did, did you know the director of The Secret of Nymph? Because I didn't. Did you know off the top of your head? This guy did. I mean, some of those questions, it seemed like the other team got a whole lot of softball questions to me. I'm proud of what they did, but I'm even more proud of this team right here. I can't wait to see this one do some singles competition too. Oof, I know. Well, it, it's a little weird though, because you did hit 80s and that's we know it's your strength, but it's almost like people hitting their strengths lately. And we had Riley, we had Guy. It's like their strengths are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, they're deep cuts, and it's funny because sometimes your knowledge can work against you. When they started to ask me the question about Big Top Pee Wee, my brain immediately went to Dog Face Boy, Freaked, Keanu Reeves, and then I couldn't back off of that because I had the other celebrity that's played a dog voice yeah. face boy so that happens like sometimes you have so much in your head that it gets tangled coming out so i i certainly think that the deep knowledge helps but it's not always the uh the key absolutely and brian i saw you shaking your head after you guys missed that one steal i could tell like it was right there and you just couldn't come up with it <sighs> What's next for you guys? Brianne, you've done such an amazing job running our Patreon. I mean, are you gonna keep competing? Can we see you around here? I mean, obviously in a performing in a competitive capacity? Um, I feel like this year is finished, right? There's, cause it's the tournament, the singles tournament, then we get to spectacular. So I don't think you're gonna see me doing the competing right you know, anytime soon, I would think. But but you are coming back, because I can say, having been in this tournament for a while and having competed both against and with several people, you better be back, because oh. this went really well. No, Brand, but so we need you, we need you. So let's we bring need this you up, back. though. You say this, this collective we, does that mean that Take the Cannoli might stick together going forward? Because you guys proved well, you have see. such great chemistry. Well, let's see. I'm not, I'm not ruling anything out. I'm not going anywhere. Let's see what happens. And I would be proud to manage them again. Oh. And speaking of, uh, you actually have a singles tournament coming up. I do. I do. And, and you're uh, facing not exactly a slouch. You're facing Mark Andreco. I have known the android for many, many years. Uh, well How are we starting out with like a battle of the ages yeah, as round one? Uh, and his brain's very scary. So uh, I look forward to, uh, to showing up and seeing what happens. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you know this. You have something on your shirt. So I, you might I, want to take care uh, of that. from today. It was a little, little bloody out there. <laughs> <laughs> not our opponent's blood, but someone else's. So sorry about that. Oh, God. God. Well, guys, it was awesome seeing you compete, and I can't wait to see uh, what happens next. Thank you. And we're back with the Harris brothers. Guys, 
I think that's safe to say that you just pulled up one of the biggest upsets in this tournament. John, welcome, first of all, to oh, the league. It's um, uh, a pleasure to be here. Most people, I think, they come in their first time, the lights get to them, they get a little sweaty out there. And after round one, it seemed like you really kind of settled into it. Yeah, I only get sweaty around the last 20 minutes of The Silence of the Lambs, or any Demi film. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was a breeze. I was able to sit in and take it, and I'm really not too concerned going forward. I really think it's the importance of preparation and education. It's something that I think the Schmodown does not have enough of. People staying up late the night before, partying hard, and not taking this seriously as they would any other item in their curriculum. I was shocked there was not a single question from before 1984. I did not get a question mm. about Sturges, John, or Preston. Tragic. And I gotta say, take the cannoli was no slouch. There was a lot of back and forth in this match. Were you getting a little hot under the collar out there? I mean, you know, you always want to perform at uh, the peak level that you can. You always want to, you know, impress everybody with your knowledge base. Take the cannoli certainly seemed to have some knowledge about what they were doing in the showdown. Seems to have seen some films from at least the 90s and the current era, at least. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it was an intense battle, but I was always confident that we would pull it out in the end. Were you surprised at all the difficulty of your round two questions? I, I was a little bit uh, surprised about the number of films with computer-generated imagery in them, but once we got down to the, the meaty plot of the films, of Samuel L. Jackson getting mauled by a shark, I was confident that we would be able to win going the, forward. The real highlights of his uh, oeuvre, I felt like. I was glad that we were able to focus on that at the end of the round. He also gets eaten by a shark in a 1998's The Red Violin. Mm, true, how true. Who knew? <gasps> so anyways, I have to ask the obvious question, uh, where does this leave JTE? JTE is recuperating from his injuries. Obviously, we wish him all the best. I've uh, sent a wreath to his uh, hospital room where he's recovering. But uh, I think for this tournament, uh, Jonathan, our visiting professor, has come in. It's been an impressive show. I think we want to continue on our current path. I think we want to see the semester through, and I think we will compete together for the rest of the tournament. I'm proud to have achieved tenure with you. Yes, I agree. Hmm. All right, quite, quite. well, next match, you're going to be facing Andreco and Snyder, and Who? Jesus Christ. Yeah. One interview yeah. without crashing. Sorry, with I just I just wanted to size them up, Jen, because you know I don't know who they are. I've heard of the Cohen brothers. I've heard of the sisters brothers, but who are the Harris brothers? I mean, J John, Lon. Who's the third one? Moron. Mm. Oh. It, uh, a, a worthy dig. Is this a prop from some sort of Michael Bay film where he is measuring penis length? I don't know. Uh, are you guys professors at the University of Phoenix? Didn't come up with a rhyme that was just one syllable. It would have worked for a lot better. Lon, John, Con, uh, Don, something like that. It's supposed to go like well, multiple syllables. Don't hit, don't put him through the Listen, ringer. He'll ruin the whole curve. Just, it's like a little break from cinema John, linguistics. John, you impressed me today. You played very well. But Lon, you wouldn't even be here if JT hadn't gotten injured. How, who knows how many words he would have mispronounced today. You're, you're very you're, lucky. Your former teammate in uh, nationalism, JT, I'm, I'm shocked to hear you turn on him. Uh, I, I, I knew how were, to corral him. You came up him. with the brown shirts together as co-nationalists, and now here you are, you're dismissing him. How cruel. Listen, I, I would never do that to a teammate. Congratulations on your victory today. Mr. Andreco and I look forward to uh, sending you back to whatever junior college you guys uh, come your, from. Your, your partner who draws the funny books. Yes, I understand. Yes, salutations, yes, indeed. Well done. Hmm. Just one week, Christian. I would just love to not be crashed. Can we get some security in here? I, I should be allowed to finish my lecture. The Cronenberg crash, oh, not the Paul gosh, Haggis trash. Please. Oh, uh, this is Italian. Hmm. Yes. Reminds me of my uh, years of studying in Milan. Yes, De Sica used to make me mm. these for me. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, look at that. I mean, the confidence with the Harris brothers is there, and they said, basically, we doubted. They didn't. Um, and you have Drew McQueenie obviously upset, but looking to go into that singles tournament, yep. and Breanne Chandler basically saying she's, you know, she's she had her fun, and she's, Breanne has been, first of all, and I said this to her before the match, and I say this now, though I tell you guys how important Patreon is, I can tell you how important that Breanne Chandler Certainly. is to yep. our Patreon, and everything she does, and all the interactions. So, Thank you guys to, to all the teams here today. And I don't know, that odd couple match between Andreco and Snyder or now the Harris brothers, 
I don't know. Certainly one to watch because the Harris brothers did not luck into this. They didn't get a nice category that served them well in round two, and they were able to eke out a victory. They won this thing. They came to play, and they're going to come to play the odd couple, so they better prepare. And I think that's going to be one of the more anticipated matches all of a sudden in this Anarchy tournament. I mean, I don't know which way that one's going to go. It's anybody's guess as to who's going to take this entire tournament, but the Harris brothers' name should be mentioned in the list of contenders. Well, the Harris brothers are your winners today, and you guys are the winners also, thank you so much for contributing to the Patreon. I cannot tell you how important it is and how it keeps us going. I put a big post in the Movie Trivia Showdown page a couple of weeks ago of how crucial it is and the things that we're going to be doing in the future and how it is really... I want you guys to be able to see when you see all these new things happening, the new editors, the new writers, the new things that we've been doing here, and as this thing grows, the more live events we do, I want you guys to look and go, that's because of me. I was able to do that. I contributed to that. I, you are helping us grow. We are giving you more and more in these tiers to make sure that it is, the matches hopefully themselves are worth it, but then there's other things inside of that, those tiers that we want to make it worth it for you guys. So join today if you're not and help us grow this thing to another level. It was very well written by you. Only two grammatical errors that I'd known and improvement for you. It was an impassioned response and letting people know that the Patreon is there for your support should you want to do so. You can always join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page and check out the Schmodown Rundown wherever you select your podcast to listen to at the gym, on the go, or in the bathroom. For Christian Harloff, my name is Mark Ellis, and I guess we'll see him next time, partner. Oh, oh we just oh, been we handed a, a note. No, it's a cannoli. Oh. This is you, they, you take the can take the cannoli. I don't actually do take the, the cannoli. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.